Hello, and welcome to the interview show. We bring people back from the dead and interview them. Today, here with us is Rosa Parks. I am very pleased to meet you. I will now ask you questions. Wonderful. Okay, tell us about your childhood. Well, my childhood wasn't very good, what with the separation and all. Oh, your parents separated? Yes, but that's not the kind of separation I was talking about. Oh, what were you talking about? You see, I was born after the Civil War, so that meant all slaves in America were free, but they did not have civil rights. I don't understand. Some people thought that the blacks and the whites should be kept apart, so we didn't drink out of the same water fountain, we couldn't go to the same schools, we couldn't even sit in the same row on the bus. On the bus there were white only signs, but black people have to sit behind them. If lots of people got on the bus and it filled up, the driver moved the side back and we have to give up our seats. Oh, I see now. Tell us about your childhood. Well, I was born on February 4th, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. After my parents separated, my mother, brother, and I moved in with my grandparents. I remember sitting around the fire with my grandfather. He would keep his gun next to him just in case. Just in case for what? The Ku Klux Klan, of course. They were a group of white people going around beating blacks. Oh my. We would love to come we will love to learn more once we come back from commercial break. Okay, we are back. We just learned about Rosa Parks childhood. On to the next question. What was the big bus incident everyone is talking about? Well, in nineteen fifty five I got on the bus from my way home from a long day of work. I got on the bus, paid my fare, and sat down. Soon the bus filled up and the driver had to move the sign back. He told me and three other people to stand up, but we did not. So what happened? He said, you better give me those sheets. And the three others stood up. What about you? I refused. I was sick and tired of not being able to sit where I want to. I didn't move and the driver had me arrested. Okay, next do you think you're a mover shaker and why? Yes, because I helped start the civil rights movement. I also helped end segregation on the bus. That's great. Is there anything else we need to cover? In 1957, Ramond, my husband, and I moved to Detroit, Michigan, and that's where I became secretary of John Cormier's, the representative for Michigan. Then, in 2005, I died. That was a great story. Too bad it had to end. Thank you. Well, that was the interview show. Remember, we bring people back from the dead and interview them.